Good afternoon to all of those joining from around the world. My name is Marcel Marcones. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at ABI in the US. For anyone who doesn't know ABI, we're the world's largest brewer, operating in more than 150 countries. So I want to share some of the experiences and learnings we've had at ABI over the last year, as we have transformed our business during the pandemic. And more specifically, why I believe marketers have an incredible opportunity in front of us. And what is this opportunity? It's the opportunity to not just get back to normal, but to get better. Here in the US, we are fortunately, hopefully, beginning to see brighter days ahead as vaccinations increase and the country reopens. But there, of course, is still a lot of work to do here as well. And I will share the ways that we at ABI are working to actively support those efforts. Additionally, I want to explain the movie I chose for the theme of my talk. That movie is Field of Dreams. At ABI, we dream big. And something about the title Field of Dreams reminds me of that. For those who haven't seen the movie, it's all about a guy who decides to turn his cornfield into a baseball field after hearing a message from above that if you build it, they will come. These represent two ideas that are core to ABI's future. One is simply the power of big dreams to change the world. Now, the second, when it comes to marketing, is if you follow your instinct and focus on what really matters to people as humans, you will ultimately get consumers to join you on an even more meaningful journey. If you lead with actions, if you build it, they will come and your brand will be even more successful. This is what the pandemic has taught us at ABI. And this lesson has completely transformed how we do what we do. But to understand this transformation, we have to start by going back to the spring of 2020. That was the very beginning of when COVID started to reshape all our lives overnight. And for a company like ABI, it was obviously a very difficult moment for our business as the places where people come together to enjoy our products, from bars to restaurants to sporting events to concerts, had to shut down and we were facing an uncertain future. As a marketing team, we were very unsure about what to do in response. We were asking ourselves, how can we show up at such an extraordinarily difficult moment? What do we do when the idea of celebrating the joy of having a beer feels so far from people's minds. Do people even need to hear from a beer company at a time like this, or would it be inappropriate? We had to trust that if our actions were relevant to consumers, then this will authentically lead to our messages being communicated and shared. Our initial efforts at leading with actions ended up coming together around three big initiatives. At the beginning, safety was the issue on everyone's minds. People were worried about keeping themselves safe and protecting themselves and their families from the virus. That is what people wanted to hear about. So immediately we said to ourselves, this is where we need to focus as a company if we were going to be relevant. We realized that we could make an immediate impact by focusing on hand sanitizers, for example, which was needed everywhere, but in short supply across the country. So, we converted some of our breweries to start manufacturing hand sanitizers instead of beer. Anheuser-Busch is making hand sanitizer. They're getting in the game. Today, the beer producing company donated 61,000 ounces of hand sanitizer. That was our first big initiative. At the same time, we were hearing from the American Red Cross that hospitals were running dangerously low on blood and that they really needed to restart their blood drives to receive donations. The problem was that the places that typically hold blood drives aren't big enough for social distancing. So we worked with the sports teams and stadiums that we sponsored, which were not being used because of the pandemic. And we partnered with the Red Cross to transform them into blood drive centers. Through the one team campaign, we helped collect enough blood to potentially save more than 11,000 lives. Check it out. This buds for the blues, the reds, and the warriors. This buds for the magic. 
the Athletics, the Giants, and the Jazz. This buds for the Trailblazers, the Braves, the Yankees, and the Angels. This buds for the home team. The response we got was incredibly positive from consumers. And so what they told us was, it is okay for us to show up in these moments, as long as we're doing something that is genuinely adding value for people. We also saw an opportunity to put the weight of our brands behind this effort in a way that felt both authentic and relevant. Take a look. out to the ball game take me out to the couch baseball or football or racquetball we don't mind we'll watch any at all cause it's root 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 for the home team no way we don't really care we care i care cause sports are finally back and there's a bird Bud Light launched it Open for Takeout to help people identify local restaurants and bars that were open for takeout service. We came up with a food platform for Stellar Trois, where we brought chefs and celebrities together to give tips to consumers on how to elevate their meals at home. And we connected that program with the opportunity for consumers to support restaurants that were closed. We doubled down our existing gaming efforts with Bud Light Seltzer and created two big events that led us to become the number one brand page on the platform Twitch. And this program also allowed us to raise funds for the Red Cross and other charities. We started a platform with Mikla Boltra that brought celebrity instructors together to train and create home workout sessions for people. And we connected that to providing funds for gyms that were closed and suffering during this period. All these programs were formed by that core people-first approach of showing up by providing something meaningful and relevant to the consumer and acting on our shared responsibility to support segments of society that were in need. As the year went on and the circumstances of the pandemic changed, the key thing for us became, how do we keep evolving our people-first approach to stay relevant and meaningful to people? A good example of that is something we did with the NBA and Mikla Boltra. When the NBA restarted the season inside the league bubble in Orlando, we wanted to find a way to connect fans with the games, even though they could not attend them. Check it out. We have seen some unbelievable things in basketball. This is something out of a movie. Games have been suspended. This is the last night of NBA games. The league will use this hiatus to determine the next steps. We play games without the fans? Yeah. No, it's impossible. I ain't playing. It's a whole new experience with Michelob Ultra. Virtual fans are in attendance. Yo, this is sick, dude. You just scan a Michelob bottle to see if you want to see.
that energy and bond between people is an essential part of the experience. It's pretty crazy, man. You can literally talk to your people in your section. My brother right here. I hear I'm sitting next to Shaq. What's up, Brent? Wade in the Miami Heat section. Snoop Dogg, Mickey Mouse, Scotty Pippen. We see it, Chuck. All of you exercise your voice and your rights. It is a whole, it's new, a whole game. new different game. kind of viewing experience. I like experience. that virtual crowd that they had. The virtual fan board is unbelievable. Yeah. The NBA is leading the way, as usual. It's fantastic what's happening in this bubble. Why, you? Oh, nice. What you did see, eh? Oh! <laughs> What a beautiful pass. I like this a lot. I want, I want to do this more. This is like a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic opportunity. Ultra Courtside was a tremendous success for the company in connecting with NBA fans. This proves that leading with actions instead of just ads still results in creating work that pushes the envelope when it comes to innovation and creativity. So, there we were, many months into the pandemic. And we had really started to hit our stride in terms of finding ways to be people first in our marketing efforts. However, there was an important unanswered question we still had to confront, which was, how was our business going to perform amid all the disruption of 2020? At the beginning of the pandemic, we were really concerned about what the business would look like at the end of the year. And we naturally wondered, how have all the changes to our business strategy affected our performance? So, by the end of 2020, ABI delivered meaningful results in the U.S. We were the number one brewery in contribution to industry growth. We were the number one in innovation by volume. And finally, we were number one in share of voice in social media. This really validated the work we had been doing to become people-centric during the pandemic. It proved to us that if you build it the right way, by really focusing on consumers as humans, they will come. People will come, Ray. And it led us to the critical insight about our business strategy that is the theme of this talk. This people-first approach wasn't just a way to adapt our business to the pandemic. People-first was our whole business. There was no going back to normal, but only to someplace better. With this new approach in mind, we had a big decision to make about what we would do at the 2021 Super Bowl, for example. In the US, there is no bigger event for marketers than the Super Bowl. And at ABI, we have, through the years, created some of the most iconic ads in the game through brands like Budweiser, Bud Light, and more. We knew we had to do something big, but we also knew we had to do something different, better than before. And from that feeling, the first ever Super Bowl spot from the parent brand of Anheuser-Busch was born. Let's take a look. <laughs> Come on, I'm buying you a beer. Okay. What do they say? Flight crews next door eat pizza. Oh, here's the new friends. We used to call me with Eddie. You remember that? I had such a crush on my sister. We all did. <laughs> They're gonna go their way, and we're gonna go our way. Lydia, we sure could use your help on this. Okay. Congrats. No, not yet. It wasn't that noticeable, was it? Yeah, only if you have ears. <laughs> I can't do Friday. I got a date. Why don't you bring her here? <laughs> Come on. Let's grab a beer. Yes. The reaction we got to the Let's Grab a Beer ad was incredible. 
And it was very inspiring to see how much that feeling of wanting to be together meant to people. Then we decided to focus on actions instead of ads by taking the money we would have spent on a Budweiser spot and partnering with the Ad Council to fund a vaccination awareness campaign. So again, for us, coming out of that Super Bowl work, we wanted to see, okay, how can we build on this message as things start to open up this summer? How will people's outlook change and what will they need from us? And how can we keep getting better at connecting with them in the moment? By springtime in the US, vaccination rates were increasing at a rate which suggested that by summer, things could start to finally open back up and a safe return to social life would be possible. For summer, this meant addressing everything from the need to support efforts to get Americans vaccinated to celebrating the return of sports, live music, to rewarding people for getting back to the gym and working out. With Budweiser, we announced that the first round at the bar is on us if you've been vaccinated. Check it out. With Bud Light, we launched the Summer Stimulus Package, which included the biggest sports ticket giveaway we've ever done. With Michelob Ultra, we created a program where people could exchange miles for beer to enjoy together after finishing their workout. Throughout all this work, we have always been looking for ways to see what else we can do to incentivize the population to take action and help turn the page on the pandemic. This focus on impact led to an amazing moment this summer when the White House reached out and said they had been following our efforts and wanted to see how we might work together. So I will let the U.S. President Joe Biden to explain the plan that was created. Check it out. And to top it off, Anheuser-Busch announced that beer is on them on July the 4th. That's right. Get a shot and have a beer. Free beer for everyone 21 years or over to celebrate the independence from the virus. Let's get ready for a summer like no other. Let's look forward to seeing friends and family again. Let's get excited to head back to the bars. Let's get ready for the greatest time in history to grab a beer. When we hit the White House's goal of 70% partially vaccinated, beer's on us. Let's grab a beer, America. It's not every day as a business that you get a call from the White House about the work your marketing team is doing, right? When I thought about the line from Field of Dreams, if you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. I confess I don't think we ever imagined the him to be Joe Biden. But seriously, to hear our work referenced by the President of the United States and help the country reach that milestone was amazing. For me, it was a recognition of how at ABI we are leading with humanity, dreaming big and putting people first. Our insight was that we're moving from that feeling of what we've missed to the feeling of we're looking forward to being together again. This meant we needed to pivot our focus to finding ways for our brands to support people as they started to reconnect and get back to doing the things that the pandemic had put on hold. And we needed to find a way to capture that emerging emotion. Let's take a look. Oh, hi. <laughs> you ready to go? Hi. <clears throat> hi. Hi. I'm Simon. <laughs>
Good afternoon. In less than a week, we hope to fire up our grills and launch one of the biggest 4th of July celebrations in the history of the United States. The United States. Those words have new meaning for us all today. And whether you drive a pickup or a hybrid, you live in the heartland or on the coast, or whether you pronounce it America or America, we're all Americans. Seldom on the same page, but reading from the same book on holidays, anyway. Perhaps it's fate that this 4th of July, we gotta once again come together to lend a hand to those less fortunate whose fate still lies in the balance. We're fighting for freedom for all, not from alien invaders, from separation, from being cooped up while baking bread and ignoring basic hygiene. The time has come for us to get fresh, gather the crew, and eat veggie and meat burgers till we sweat. And then let's work together towards a future where everyone can come to the party. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will fill the sky with so much light and freedom, this thing will rue the day it ever messed with us. Together, we celebrate our Independence Day. Go forth, America. To conclude, I wanted to share the four key lessons of the last year for me, each of which will be integral to our strategy going forward long after the pandemic has hopefully faded into the background. Lesson number one, focus on humanity. Not a surprising one, given how much we have talked about the importance of being people first, right? But I truly believe that this is only going to be more important for all brands going forward. It is something consumers now expect of the brands they care about, and it is the next frontier of being people-centric. To compete, you have to know how, as a brand, to transform data about your consumers into insights about how people are living, and then turn those insights into meaningful actions that allow you to make deeper connections with your consumers. That is going to be the formula for success. Lesson number two, trust your instincts. That is another way of saying, you can have all the data in the world about your consumers, but to truly connect with what's happening in the moment in their lives, you're going to have to rely on an instinctual feeling for what matters to people. Back to the previous point, the better you understand your consumers, the braver you are and able to take risks. Lesson number three, take action. I truly have come to believe that for brands, actions speak louder than ads. The most creative and entertaining ad in the world can never compete with actions that make an impact in consumers' lives. Nothing is as meaningful as getting things done and finding a role for your brand in making the world a better place. Moving from saying to doing was a huge undertaking and a massive shift in how we see our roles and how we work. But it's a change that is transformative, and it will not only make our brand more respected, but it will also make it much stronger. And finally, lesson number four, please don't go back to normal. As I have mentioned before, the big opportunity here is to get better, not just back to normal. I really think the most important word here is opportunity. For all of us, as brands, as business leaders, and as people, the pandemic has been one incredibly tough moment after another. It's required us to be at our best, to be nimble, resourceful, creative, and very resilient. So after all that, whatever you do, please do not waste the opportunity to learn from everything we've been through. Instead, Take your hard-won knowledge and get 
to a better place. That's it, my friends. Thank you very much. Cheers.